this is Tito back with another video on the Redmi K20 Pro and today in this video I'm gonna be showing you the latest Lineage OS ROM which is the 5th November 2019 build the latest build as of right now based on Android 10 the latest Lineage OS well this is still unofficial this is not an official ROM by the way if you have noticed the fingerprint scanner speed let me show it to you again the fingerprint scanner almost works like flawlessly like MIUI here as you can see the fingerprint scanner is not a problem here at all right now it has been fixed a lot in the like updates now let me show you the about section here and in the android version here you will see the android version is 10 of course and i have been using the dark theme so it is dark i'll change it later on and as you can see from the lineage OS version this is the 5th november 2019 built lineage OS version 17 and for rafael of course the redmi k20 pro and the security patch is still of october 5th 2019 and here you will see the google play system update version is 10 and the build date here again it shows november 5th and here you can see the build number and the stock kernel is the perf kernel over here let me go back and into the system in the advanced section we have this updater option from where you can like check for updates over here and this lineage OS section looks like pretty cool for like checking updates let me go into the display settings and show you these options there is night light option if you are into that if you want to use the night light and make the display yellowish you can do that live display option is there so that you can control the whole rgb of the screen and there is the picture adjustment section let me go back and in the style section you will find the accent color and the like style changing option to light dark etc let me choose it to light so oh i have the dark theme enabled so that's why it was dark as you can see the theme has been changed this is how the quick settings panel looks like let me reduce the brightness a little bit so this is how it looks like the quick settings panel and you can add more stuff like night light and heads up you can disable heads up here so that is like pretty good option let me go back into the ambient display and turn this always on right now i think it will work so as you can see the always on display is on things over here the clock date notifications etc does not move around so it just stays in one position so that is kind of bad for a oled display here i would say this clock and stuff should move a little bit so that the oled display does, does not cause any burn in or something so that is what i think not a really big problem but i'm just saying so when the always on display is on i have noticed that sometimes it does not unlock the screen as you can see sometimes it just rejects but whenever you are in the lock screen like this it works like 100 percent of the time almost so that is one bummer i have found here of the always on display and here again we do have this like always on pickup then hand wave then anti flicker mode etc and we have the full screen apps option if you enable like if you want to enable some specific apps for full screen you can do that double tap to wake and double tap to sleep as well is there for the lock screen and the status bar as well and wake up on plug you can disable it if you want to and now if you go into the sound settings let me show you that there is this vibrate for calls and if you go over here on the bottom you will find this audio direct so it does not work most of the time as you can see but sometimes the me audio direct do show up and it does work and you can disable touch sounds charging sounds etc options and i have been using these gestures of course of android 10 now let me go into the system again and show you the buttons and status bar options in the button section we have the navigation bar invert layout option home long press action and stuff then we have the power menu option where you will find the screenshot option there is no three finger screenshot gesture or something as of right now long press for torch is there so it does work no problems at all regarding this long press for torch and over here the control playback option is there show panel on the left this is how the volume panel looks like again and you can expand it just like this let me go back and in the status bar section we have the quick pull down option if you want to choose it to right left you can do that network traffic indicator is there system icons are there and for battery percentage i would say you have to enable it from the battery settings then you can come here and like choose it to be inside the icon but this inside the icon and next to the icon simply is not working here i am not sure why but this not working as you can see even if i choose it to be hidden if the battery percentage is enabled from the battery settings 
it will show up just in like to the right of the battery icon and one more thing again is you cannot change the battery status style even though it is circle like chosen to be circle but it is like normal portrait battery icon as you can see up top so that is one thing again and here we have the clock position changing option you can choose it to be center and stuff so it does work and show seconds option is there if you want that am pm option is there and there is this brightness slider auto brightness and the brightness control as well so that you can like increase or decrease the brightness from the status bar just like this so this is a really handy feature in my opinion so here in the gestures we have the system navigation and here i have chosen it to be gesture navigation so this like whole gesture thing of android 10 is working flawlessly here as you can see the back gesture and stuff everything works super fine no issues and if you enable developer options you will find this advanced restart option so it does work this like if you if you tap on restart it will show the reboot to system recovery and fast boot options and the stock camera present in this rom is still that snapdragon camera which is really stupid but i have flashed the inix camera version 156 and it is working fine even with the like all the lenses it is working but do not expect 48 megapixel pictures or something it is the option is there but it does not quite work if i take a 48 megapixel picture it will not take a real 48 megapixel picture as you can see this is a 2.8 megapixel picture so that is a con and the portrait mode and stuff will force close this camera so be aware of that so yes the video mode should work fine for you in the anx camera here so no issues with the anx camera and with the anx camera the 960 fps slow mo videos are working fine too here is an example of that and for gcam yes i have been using this gcam 7 it is working flawlessly no issues whatsoever i'll link it below if you wanna like install this gcam version even portrait mode night sight and even video is working fine with this gcam 7 no issues up there now let me talk about some more things with this rom well google pay will not be working over here like out of the box if you want to get it working you have to disable the phone and sms app permission from the google play services now let me go back the drm info here let me show you it does show as level one as you can see the security level shows as level one so that is one like good thing but i'm not quite sure if it will actually work because i don't have a netflix or amazon prime account now let me show you the stock dialer here so this is how the stock dialer looks like Volte calls working super fine here and we also get a recording call option so that is a really good thing also talking about the front camera leds well it is working fine as you can see here whenever like i'm trying to open the front camera it is working fine the leds if you notice they do work fine here is the android score of this rom and if you go into the settings we have this kind of settings and if you want to know which launcher is it well it is trebuchet launcher as we see in like most lineage os roms and in the settings panel we have this like developer option and stuff then we have show google app not much settings to the left we have the google now cards here and you, you can swipe down anywhere on the home screen to get to the quick settings panel but there is no double tap to sleep anywhere on the home screen widgets and stuff is working fine if you can pull up from here from the bottom to get the app drawer and you can search any app like this over here so no problems at all regarding this stock launcher and the gestures with the stock launcher is working fine too now let me open some of the apps and show you guys the app open up speeds and the ram management let's open play store instagram spotify youtube now let me open all the apps from memory again so as you can see the app open of speeds and the animation is of course like buttery smooth here no issues whatsoever no glitches that i could find everything is fast snappy buttery smooth as you can see you can switch between apps just like this and all the apps do stay in memory this is a 6 gb unit of the redmi k20 pro and it has been working fine and let me open pubg and show you guys the settings which settings you can play pubg on this rom so while it's updating PUBG, I will talk about the flashing of this ROM. Well, I would say if you want to flash this ROM, you can go for it. But let me tell you, this is still an unofficial ROM. Be aware of that. This is not the best stable experience you're going to get from here. 
Now, let's say if you are one willing to flash this ROM, you need the like Orange Fox recovery. You have to install the latest Orange Fox recovery if you want to flash any ROM on Redmi K20 Pro. If you want to like see how to flash the Orange Fox recovery, here is a card. Now, once you have flashed the Orange Fox recovery, I'll recommend you to format the data. Once you have done formatting the data, just like go to install, flash the ROM file, then the GFs file from the description box below. Then just like make sure to flash the fcrypt disabler file. If you don't do that, it will encrypt your storage. So do flash the fcrypt disabler. So you need three files, the ROM file, the GFs file and fcrypt disabler. And then you can install magisk and stuff if you want to. And also NX camera, etc. if you want to. So that is how it is. That is how simple it is to flash this ROM. I have had no problems at all regarding flashing this ROM. And also, if you're not on the latest MIUI 11 firmware, you have to flash that firmware too if, in case if you are not on the latest firmware. So do make sure to flash the latest firmware from the description box below. You Then like if you are updating the firmware, you need the firmware file first to flash, then you flash the ROM file, then you flash the GApps file, then the fcrypt disabler, then a next camera and the magisk zip. So that is how simple it is. Then like let me show you the graphic settings now. In the graphic settings you can see we can play on HDR and Extreme. So that is the highest settings possible here. So you can play like on every settings a smooth balanced HD and HDR everything on Extreme settings. So no problems at all regarding performance here regarding gaming performance and talking about battery life I would say the battery life is pretty decent here. Here are some screenshots as you can see I have had almost like 42% battery left which gave me around 7 plus hours of screen on time or almost about 7 hours. So no issues whatsoever, you can definitely get about 8 plus hours of screen on time with every full charge. And it also supports quick charging of course, the 18 watt quick charger does work too over here, no issues whatsoever with this ROM. So thank you so much for watching guys, give it a thumbs up if you liked it, subscribe to the channel down there if you have not yet. This is Tito from Kerry and Tech signing off for today, I'll be catching you guys in the next one. Bye bye now.